Hey, Eamon here, your editor, your best friend, and your tired boy. It's been a long day. I'm pretty sick. My throat hurts a lot. But I'm here to tell you that this is a clip episode, and if you want to skip it, I have zero qualms with that. I want to see you next season, bright and early, ready to do those push-ups. I don't know what I'm talking about. This is our best of for season one. And we're going to be talking a lot between the clips, but I understand if you want to skip it. So I'll see you in season two. Stay crispy. Remember that was our catchphrase from season one? There's an infinite number of universes out there. In many of them, there is a podcast by us. In one of them, it's good. Please enjoy. All hail Zop! My name is Eamon, and this is my co-host, Sergeant Ghost. Actually... Lastly, I'd like to say that I love my girl, Rose. Engage with Zorp. It's me, your favorite fairy tale villain. Furthermore, and I personally think that Zane is one attractive man. What's kicking, little chickens? In conclusion, I have a big butt and an ugly face and my butt smells and I like to kiss my own butt. So it was Easter recently. Why don't we hide Christmas presents? What's this? A riddle. A riddle for you! Hey, what's up? It's Eamon. Let's do this thing. Hey, I just had an interesting idea. Why don't I create a poll in our Facebook group and then invite people to come post on it and then read out whatever they wrote in the order that they vote it? That sounds like a good idea. Thanks, past me. Great idea. Let's confuse anyone who tunes into this and make them real confused immediately the second they click play. Hi, I'm Eamon from the But Yeah podcast. This is me actually talking now. And there's no normal intro today because this is not a normal episode. This is a special episode that we're bringing to you in our sort of season break, which is sort of a clip show, but in a way there's going to be more talking than there is clips, I think. So is it really a clip show or is it a talk show about our clips? Who knows? This is our Juicy Cuts episode and I'd like to invite you to take a seat and listen in. Let's jump right in. First clip, episode 15. This is from our Christmas episode where we were both in the same room in my old house and we tried eggnog for the first time and just talked about the experience in a very objective and mature fashion. I don't remember yelling, this is very creamy, this is very noggy, but let's go listen to it. Oh, I should mention, I have absolutely no idea what Zeb is going to say after my clip ends and he introduces his clip. So, (laughs) let's see. (laughs) So, the creamy juice is here. That creamy, juicy love. Everyone everyone around the world is drinking this creamy juice um, with whatever whatever favorite additive they want. Um, Just worldwide, everyone's getting down on that creamy juice of egg and nog. That 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 old creamy nog. That yeah, the kids are, the kids are drinking it. Grandma's drinking it. Aunt the aunt 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 Mary is really drinking it. The eggiest of nogs. Um, so we're trying eggnog for the first time. Um, I don't know what to say. It tastes like creamy milk and then tastes, um, tastes cleaning like, fluid. Tastes like yeah. <laughs> I've just poured out store bought nog into some brandy. <laughs> first, first time I think first time I've ever drank. You've never had nog before, have you? Have you? Nogged? I've never had my yeah. You sir, you've never tried this before, have you? <laughs> no, I've never nogged. No, I've no, never nogged before. I've never nogged. Um, no, I've first... ne- never had eggnog. Never had brandy. Never lived. Have now. I'm not sure if I like it. <laughs> I don't know if I like my new life. I think. Is this it for the rest of my life? Just drinking nog? Is this just maybe? So this is Zeb with my half of. Uh, the Super Super Thursday Season 2 uh, Special Season 1 Finale Hybrid f- Flashback Filler Episode? This isn't filler. No. No, people love this. People people love hearing stuff they've already heard. Or at least all the good bits. Now you don't have to listen to Season 1. How good's that? How good's that? Let's just listen to all the good bits. Um, anyway, I've picked out a few as well as Eamon. Um, I'm not sure if I'm on the first half of this because we've recorded this separately. Uh, but I digress. 
um, my favorite type of content tends to be the digressions. Anything that in my type of content is the type of content which impedes Eamon's ability to deliver a wholesome or otherwise episode completing ep content. Um, so the first thing I've picked out here is one time we had a bit of a chat about a game show idea. Yeah. What if the precogs from the Minority Report, that movie? Ah, yes. Uh, good thing we're, we're ending on a topic that ties everything we've just talked about into a neat little package. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What if when they did get away and then they started a talk show where they were gossiping, but like giving the gossip of the week, <laughs> but the next week coming rather than the week just What then. would the show be called? Hang on, let, um, let me look up breakfast show names. You just keep talking for a moment. But yeah, I just think it'd be great. They'd be just all talking over the top of each other. I imagine it would probably be all three of them. And then maybe they'd have, like, a guest. So, in, Aust in Australia, we have Sunrise, we have Today, we have News Breakfast and The Morning Show. Um, probably... The Morning Minority. <laughs> um, turning Cogs. <laughs> turning Cogs. <laughs> God. <laughs> they'd be just there in a panel, that one of those one-sided desks looking out at the audience. Still bald, I assume. So, these are the bald precogs. Yeah. Are they in their in their barbs or um <laughs> Yes. Yes they are. They are still in the barbs, but like physical just regular bathtubs. <laughs> <laughs> like, hello everybody and welcome to Talking Cogs. He's the charismatic one. He's very well known for like flying off the handle and going on tangents. And he's like, so this week uh wait, are they talking about what they're gonna talk about or are they talking about what's gonna happen? They're talking about what's going to happen. Uh, so this week... Because they're, pre they're using their precog abilities to give the future gossip. Yeah, so this week yeah. uh, in, uh, in the Golden Globes, we have a number of winners um, that we're looking forward to seeing. <laughs> oh, they just share all the results. Guess, <laughs> and the Golden Globes are like, fuck those guys. They just interview people who are going to win. <laughs> yeah, so how do you feel about the fact that you're going to win? <laughs> and Leonardo DiCaprio is like, well, um, I've already won once, so I don't... I think I think it was this show that I won on. I can't remember now. I've won so, I've won so many awards. I guess I'm pretty stoked. So this week coming, you don't win. How do you feel about that? Like this is the first time he hears of that. They bring him on, and they don't know what they're going to tell him. Oh, you don't win this week. <laughs> How do you feel about that? Oh, so I, I, I'm sorry. It doesn't look like you're going to be winning this week. How so do how do you feel about the nip slip you had later this how week? How do you feel about the scandal you're involved in soon? So you're so unfortunately. Our guest this today, um, he dies later this week. What do you think of that? Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, um. Um, what? <laughs> Obviously, they don't tell anyone else. They, they want authentic reactions, I guess. So this clip from episode 22 is about the history of flat earth theory in a comedic way. But I think instead of talking about that, I'm just going to read this buck wild excerpt from the official Strawinsky law for the Glob Glow Gab Galab. And I bet Zeb has mentioned this boy somewhere else in this episode, but I have no way of knowing. But when the Glob Glow Glab Galab says, I am the yeast of thoughts and minds, the official explanation for that is his body is like a huge lump of dough that is fed by the thoughts and stories of the books. The contents of the books work their way just like yeast through his body, causing all kinds of changes within him that he can't properly control, and thereby making him extremely overweight and obese. Nonetheless, he spends all his life consuming whatever thoughts and books he can find. Oh my god! This is worse than what I thought it was! I thought it was a metaphor, but he's literally a yeasty boy who's swallows up information through his physical body oh my god anyway here's some flat earth theory he also said up there's some guy at the time and it's funny that like the old the world back then is kind of like the world now in that there was this guy who was all like the world's not round if anyone can prove that the world is round i will give them a million dollars or then this guy um old old wally went okay and then he did an experiment and then the courts went, yep, that confirms it. And the other guy, like, kicked up a massive stink and, like, started suing everyone. Left, right, and center, just being like, no, this does a fraud and everything's wrong. Do you have, do you have what Wally did? No, it's like, I think something similar to the experiment where they got the two poles and then measured the shadow change. Oh, yeah. Was. It would have been cooler if he did, like, a, like, a giant, some sort of giant mechanical arrow that fired off into the horizon and came back around. <laughs> 
He just launched the first satellite and then it peeled out into a flag that said, eat shit. Oh, good stuff. Um, but yeah, it seems to come to my attention that I think they grew their hair at the end of that. So I still think they'd shave it again or wax it or find other, some other way to be completely smooth. It's an important part of the visage or show such as that. Um, I mean, maybe they find that the hair isn't really appealing. Like, they grow the hair and go, this is itchy and awful. I don't know why people do this. Maybe that's why they're stuck in the present and why they can't see the future. And Or maybe, yeah, maybe it blocked their psychic powers. Um, but I digress. Uh, my next one is a... You'll notice in this one, there's a weirdly, like... Sounds like a special effect bit of audio, but I think I just genuinely just... I think it's just me blowing into the microphone in a really annoying way. Maybe Eamon fixed it? I don't know. But, but, but yeah. I don't know. This is about uh, if we ever got money to make an anime, this is what it would be. Welcome to Night Vape. <laughs> oh, that sounds like a scary club. It's kind of like rap battles, but they're vape battling. Oh my god. They're going like, yeah, yeah, mmm. That's a dragon. <laughs> well, he did a smoke ring. Oh, he did a smoke sphere. He, they just like <laughs> vapes out a fist and punches him. <laughs> oh man, that's an anime. He vapes out some hurtful words. <laughs> just like your mother was a cow. Oh, he like vape. They both like vape out these figures that then fight each other. <laughs> it's like <laughs> Beyblade. Back to Beyblades, where they have the monsters that emerge from the Beyblades. They have um, vape beasts. <laughs> it's called Welcome to Vape. Welcome to Night Vape, the anime, and they're, like, really extreme about their vaping and having vape battles. Oh, shit. And, like, I guess they're trying to sell vapes, because, I mean, any anime is selling something. Oh, yeah, they're trying to sell vapes to children. That's, like, the one, number one <laughs> yeah. thing animes do. And the, and the, and the, the schools have to crush this craze. <laughs> Kids are fighting with their vape, um... They're having, va- they're, they're having vape beasts battles. <laughs> they probably wouldn't do much too much damage because they are literally just smoke creatures, but... They're going around kicking in bins to make a little battleground for their tiny vape, um, beasts. <laughs> so this clip from episode three... Uh, came from me being genuinely terrified of the idea of an industrial machine that could debone a human and leave them as like a flappy husk in a horrible mechanical accident or something. But I think it's important to think of the potential for if we could donate bones to people who need them, especially because they do grow back. So stop being selfish with those bones. Go donate them today. Bone donors! What if... Um, in the future, we find a way to suck bones out and you can become a bone donor. Like a blood donor. <laughs> it would well, hurt, well, but it would be worth it for I the guess. people who have their bones sucked out by the future robots. Yeah, I guess. But then you'd also need a bone donation. <laughs> well, I mean, at a certain age, you could still grow them back. That's not you true. Know. That's not well, true at have all. You ever? <laughs> That's completely <laughs> made up. <laughs> <laughs> When was the last time you had a bone sucked out? Uh, I guess did, never. Exactly. <laughs> I guess my teeth did grow back. They are bones. Yeah, damn right. I think probably how they finally beat the vi- final villain um, is... I, it's like a villain, much like... If you've seen The Legend of Korra, Avatar, there's a villain who's like... He's, a, he's an air guy, and he becomes one with the air starts uh, uh, uh spoiler alert season three uh anyway they beat him by mm, mm. anyway this villain in welcome to night vape um they imagine the crew all gets together and they all get their vape and they vape it up into like a smoke pillar and like surround him in like a big cage of smoke and then seal him inside a tree maybe or like I don't know. Something more urban than that, probably. Uh, a gutter? I don't know. You know, it's it's a work in progress. Um, for that last bit about the bin kicking, this next clip, I guess, is going to provide some context for that. Um, high school's a crazy time. High school's a crazy time. And kids are, kids are stupid. Kids are stupid. 
Although to be fair, when we when the Beyblade cra- uh, craze did strike our school, we did kick in all the bottom of the bins. Why? Because in Beyblades, they had a Beyblade Stadium dish that you Beybladed in to like to like focus the Beyblades towards each other. Oh, so you guys created a bespoke battling ground using the bins. Yeah, but they were like horribly kicked and dented. Like it wasn't like a smooth. Is that why all the bins were dented? Yes. Holy shit. That was the Beyblade craze. All the bins were dented into the bottom. They were caved in and never right. That's why we kept doing it. I never knew this. Yeah, that was Beyblades. I just thought all the bins were just dented. Blame Japan. Ah, oh, it's so hot here. So I picked this clip from episode 18 because it's so hot here, guys. You Northern Hemisphere folks. Right now, this time of year. Oh my God, it sucks here. And I just wish I was up there wandering around the mountains and just kicking back with all your cool animals. I just want to live somewhere where the bears are bigger than me, you know? Because that's that's where the good climate is. Anyway, listen to us complain about how hot it is because it's so hot here. You need a taste of it. Oh man, was it hot. Oh boy, it was so hot. I tried to eat ice cream. And it literally turned to mist on the way from the holding down position to my mouth. Oh man, it was so hot. I was driving back to Sydney and my car just turned into ash and I ended up having to pull over. Oh man, it was so hot that all my skin melted off. Oh wowee, it was so hot that I had a hot pie to cool down. It was so hot that to get from like here to the shops... I have to take about three inventories of food and just eat it the whole way as my health slowly depletes due to the heat damage. It was so hot that I I went outside in shoes and when I got home, they were gone. I stepped out of my house today and all the moisture of my body just went... It was so hot that when I put on my sunglasses, it was really bright still. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's really hard with a boot actually smoothly make a smooth dome... In the bottom of a bin. So most of it has got holes in them and leaked everywhere. Um, Heyman and I went to the same school. So that's why he was like, he knew of this, but we were in different grades. So like he would have just seen this as like an event at the school. Meanwhile, me in the Beyblade crowd was just like instigating this violence of, upon our um, waste disposal architecture. Um I didn't, I don't, I don't remember if I directly did it, but I was definitely witness and party to the knowledge. Uh, this is not a confession of guilt. I may be making all of this up just to explain an event. Um, teachers, if you're listening, <laughs> I'm making this up. It's not true. I, no, it's true. It totally happened. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, most of these episodes are all from... Most of these clips that I've picked so far have been from the same two episodes, which is uh, Weatherman from the Void and Vaping a Ship into the bo- into a Bottle. I mean, I mean, talking about... Although the vaping one isn't from the vaping one. Mm, I, I guess I'll play one that is actually from that, to the genesis of, of that. Like, what are, what are your favorite vape tricks? Oh, you know, a, a three, I like, 380, 360. I like the one where they make... An ollie. The one where they do the, the Lord of the Rings dragon. As a as a vape <laughs> trick, and they like blow out that cool um, fire dragon as smoke, or the ship. Yeah, or they do the ship. You like <laughs> blow out. Or the or the <laughs> sorry. Okay. Well, what you do is you 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 vape out a bottle first, and then you vape out a ship inside <laughs> the bottle. <laughs> vape vape a ship into the bottle. <laughs> It's like that whole hobby where you build the ships in the bottle, but even harder. <laughs> yeah, but you, you vape in. <laughs> That's the trick I want to see. I want to see someone vape a ship into a bottle. <laughs> a, a vaped bottle, not a real bottle. Oh, even a real bottle. That that would be still co- pretty It'd cool. It would still be pretty rare. Especially if you can seal it and keep it in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can just vape various things <laughs> into bottles and just keep like... This is my gallery of good vapes. Yeah. In, in like 50 years time, you'd be like, oh, this is the, the ship grandpa meticulously vaped into the bottle. <laughs> oh, man. You could call it the gallery <laughs> of dope vapes. That's what I'd call it. <laughs> oh, man. I would, that would be boss. I'd love that. <laughs> So my final clip is Zeb's explanation of creativity in episode 8, which pretty much sums up this whole thing we do, which is you just do it, and at the end of the day, you can't control whether it turns out like a bunch of mouths flapping in the wind. 
but you don't get to know that until you try. All you can really do is plan and practice, which is part of doing it. You can't create the perfect plan unless you know what doesn't work and what does work. And after 28 episodes of doing this show, I'm really happy to know that there's a lot of stuff I know doesn't work. And there's a lot of stuff that I know does work. And it's really cool. I don't know if anything comes of it other than just something fun to do. But I do know I've made a lot of friends through this. And I'm really looking forward to this coming year and what it's going to bring. So if you're doing anything creative, keep at it. Make mistakes. Record things. Watch them. Figure it out. Find out what you did wrong. Find out what you can do better. Find out what you did right and be proud of it. Take a chance on someone who might be interested in what you do. Don't downplay yourself. Go and do it. And at the end of the year, you might know when and when not to just say, blur. All creative creativity is, it's not this magical concept where it's like, ah, oh, I can create, therefore I'm human. All creativity is, is just all the shit that you've seen before reshaped. Like, if you never saw anything, you couldn't be creative. Yeah, exactly. Like, humans are just, like, really, really, really powerful machines that just turn yeah. information into data. We're just machines that aren't consistent. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, we're just, we're, we're, mach- we're meaty, gooey machines that just sort of have a randomizer at the end of it where a computer always does the same thing. Ours hits a thing at the last minute and goes, now there's 10 things it could be. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. And then you just go, blah, and say something stupid. You go, dang it, <laughs> and say the smart <laughs> one. Honestly, I can't explain why we keep going back to vape. I mean, neither of I think Eamon, Eamon bought like a, a funky little mechanical vape, but it's less for the sake of vaping and more for the sake of he wanted something else to plug into his USB slot that lit up and did something weird. Uh, but I don't know. There's just something really funny about uh, hilarious, hilarious smoking devices, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Are they harmful? I, I honestly don't know. Maybe, this, maybe I shouldn't be raising awareness. Well, maybe I should. Maybe they are a healthy alternative. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to give one more, but I'm going to go back to a classic. Most of our, our later episodes are much different from our later episode, for our earlier episodes. There's kind of like two different shows. If you divided about the 15 mark, our early episodes were a lot more uh, loose. But then um, we started sort of instigating a sort of more rigorous... Uh, they, we wrote text, like we wrote three lines before going into it. But in the early days, it was just sort of us meandering along. Um, so I'm going to play this one from one of our first episodes, which I think was called called The Bone Extraction Machine or something like that. It was episode number three. Early, early episodes, I generally recommend keeping it light on those and biasing more towards their more recent episodes, more like, more like you know, Weatherman from the Void and... Uh, maybe Neapolitan meat tub or something like that. Um, although when well, we were starting season two now, so probably start there. Unless any of this strikes your interest. Anyway, this one's one of the early versions, which I think there was a lot of good good stuff even then. I was sucking all the bones out of a chicken for um, sandwiches, and I was thinking like, if only there was like some way to make robots. Um, be able to pull bones out or detect bones but then I also got kind of horrified at the thought (laughs) of a machine that can identify bones and just suction them out like remove them like imagine that industrial accident where it like someone slipped and fell on the industrial bone sucker and it's with (laughs) and they were just flat just like wobbly leftovers man Man, it wouldn't be comical either it'd be like just gore and flesh everywhere (laughs) but Ma'am, I've got some bad news about your husband. And and also some good news. <laughs> the bad news is he no longer has any bones. The good news is? I, I don't know. I'm waiting for you to figure that out. Oh, um, you can stretch him across a canvas. <laughs> <laughs> It'd actually be kind of like a cool like a cool macabre genre of modern art, maybe. like It's kind of like, I mean, people donate their skin to to tattoo places and all that it's something like a really efficient way to to do that i mean like i mean not while you're alive obviously there's always there's be medical applications in that machine yeah, actually be really useful um but i mean i mean that google car did attack someone and inevitably so would these once they're driverless bone sucking machines 
it would be a very particular, not so necessarily the most effective weapon in the in the robot apocalypse, but it would definitely be one of their more terrifying ones. Um, just hearing the down the street, down the street, kind of like a War of the World situation. Terrifying, terrifying. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna call it. That's all my clips. There's other good stuff around, but I quite like those and. Hopefully, season two will bring us many more, many more delicious, delicious, juicy cuts of audio. I might throw a few of the spares of these up on Twitter or on our Instagram, actually, because we cut out quite a few. Anyway, that concludes uh, my half of this. So have a good, guys. Have a good one. Goodbye. All right. That concludes Zeb's parts. That's the only little section that I listened to, just him saying bye. Uh, I figure I'll mention that you can tweet us at ButYearPod on Twitter or email us, ButYearPod at gmail.com. Other than that, you can join our Facebook group, which is facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash ButYear. I post fun polls throughout the week relating to the episodes. It's a real fun time. It's actually, people have said it's one of their favorite things now. It's like a standalone thing. It's fun to be in. Anyway, thank you so much for listening. I understand it's a clip show. It's not something people usually listen to, but there is some juicy bits in between the juicy cuts. I just really appreciate the fact that you listened to our show at all. It's really, really, really cool to have someone listen to the end and hear me ramble on about it. And I love you for that. And I would absolutely love you to tell me that you listened if you came on Twitter or something like that. But if not, I hope you have a great day, a great year, and we'll see you in season two starting april 12th until then as we always say i've never said this stay crispy bye